Hello, this is Dr. Scott Catino of Henley Putnam University. And today in this video presentation, I would like to look at and highlight Leon Trotsky and the art of insurrection. Uh, Trotsky truly is a remarkable insurgent. And I think that when we focus in on this subject today, we're going to find that it has wide application to the present, particularly in the nature of insurgencies taking place and some of its leadership. What's the main point that I'm trying to reveal here in this brief presentation? Leon Trotsky is revealed in his own writing, particularly this writing that I'm analyzing here, in addition to his others, on the art of insurrection or the art of insurgency. He's revealed in his own writings as an adroit, intuitive, and very capable insurgent worthy of our study and our time. Um, throughout this very particular chapter, that I'm highlighting here in this presentation. Some of the finest qualities of an insurgent are detailed. If we look at these tactics, these techniques, these procedures that are taking place in his writings or highlighted by his own writings, we're truly going to be able to walk away from this with some lessons learned on the subject of insurgency and particularly uh, insurgent leadership. So what then are the objectives of the presentation? Uh, first and foremost, we want to highlight the unique character of a master insurgent, and indeed, that is a subject that's very important. We want to look at the nature of this individual, how this person thinks, what kind of sentiments he has, what kind of skills are being used both in intuitively and what he cultivates. Secondly, we want to discuss some of the qualities and capabilities of this insurgent. What were the talents that were being used and the, and the chief capabilities that are operationalized in this Russian Revolution and insurgency taking place that Trotsky was so pivotal in. And third, we want to assess the context, the surroundings, the environment of Trotsky's life and insurgency, and see not only what he is grabbing at, but what kind of power individually is being used and is being exploited by this individual. Those are our three major objectives. The first characteristic we see is very simple to understand, but far more difficult to be practiced, and that is a sensitivity to the balance of power. Ruthless and effective, communist insurgents like Trotsky understood the balance of power as the, the critical variable or determinant of success or failure in an insurgency. Understanding these conditions allowed insurgents like Trotsky to exploit the forces at hand uh, to his and his party's aims. And I think that's an easy point to understand, that the force that has the favor in the balance of power and resources and manpower and weaponry and leadership and mechanisms used for survival, etc., will win. But the fact of the matter is, in practice, operationalizing this is very difficult. As an insurgency drags on, as the stress of mind and body and on resources and will takes place, it's easy to lose sight of this. And I think there are many cases of this taking place. And even in the current conflict in Afghanistan, we see that the United States could certainly be far more understanding and, and certainly careful of understanding, I should say, the sensitivity to the balance of power. We look at the way the insurgents in Afghanistan are funding their insurgency through the sale of opium and, and growing and cultivating that and selling it, as well as their very strong uh, sanctuary that they have in Pakistan. These are major components and aspects of the balance of power that are underestimated in our strategic understanding. And much can be said during the Vietnam War, where we fail to understand the sensitivity to the balance of power and thus gave away so many of these critical assets that are determinant in the outcomes of a conflict. But Trotsky, like so many communist insurgents, were very careful and sensitive daily, frequently, operationally to this concept of the balance of power, and therefore were sensitive to uh, major assets being either jeopardized or possibly, be, possibly being seized for their own advantage. And that's very important to understand that. The major takeaway here is not only to understand this in counterterrorism, but also to understand this uh, 
concept, when an insurgent displays this characteristic, you're dealing with a much higher grade and more potent insurgency. That is very important to understand. Secondly, Trotsky had an acute understanding of the duration, patterns, and life or life cycles of an insurgency. This understanding allows an insurgent to weather low points, to exploit critical moments of success and recognize opportunity, but perhaps more importantly, patiently pursue objectives through recognizable stages. Also critical to understand in higher grade insurgencies when individuals like this have a psychological strength and patience gained from understanding how the life cycle of an insurgency operates, we're going to see a far more potent insurgent. Individuals like Trotsky are not easily discouraged. Severe losses, major setbacks, periods when aspects of their resources or, or aspects of their party and organization are mar marginalized, degraded, or set back in, in any other way, uh, when these moments take place, we'll find individuals like Trotsky, these higher grade insurgents, are not easily discouraged. They're not individuals that can be quickly taken over and set back simply through aggressive military action. It takes far more than that. It takes a persistent, very careful, very calculated, prolonged strategy attacking directly their centers of gravity. Trotsky had this. He had this ability to understand these life cycles and to use it also in a constructive way, recognizing opportunities, and after being patient for long periods of time, to focus and mass resources on specific strategic areas and exploiting time, and thus moving to the next cycle of an insurgency. Third, the importance of preparations and planning. Trotsky demonstrates this and calls attention to it and makes a very critical point in asserting that insurrections or insurgencies in the past often fail because of a lack of preparation and planning. And this is certainly true of communist insurgencies and major insurgencies that take place today. There is a degree of planning and preparation that they, takes place depending on the assets and goals that are already achieved. You can see the quote here by Trotsky that certainly brings some nuance, nuance and color to this concept. And I should add an additional point that scholars and those with insight and observers of modern day insurgencies call specific attention to some of the Islamic jihad insurgencies that are taking place and note that in this modern warfare, this net-centric warfare that's taking place, prolonged preparation strategies often do not take place. That's true, but that doesn't minimize the importance of preparations and plannings. Oftentimes we find that the insurgencies that take place today are happening because the insurgents are already embedded in the social, political, and economic networks of a nation, a region, or locally in, in key terrain. So there's no need for a very long, a very lengthy, a very detailed planning and preparation because that penetration of key resources and areas and institutions has already taken place. Uh, that being said, when scholars and practitioners study Al-Qaeda, we'll notice that after the period of the Soviet Jihad, there was a very lengthy planning and preparation and mobilization and deployment of resources globally um, to the point that we see Al-Qaeda emerging in the 9-11 attack, and obviously prior to that, as a very potent global force. Well, that's a subject of another day. So this is truly a characteristic of a, a more threatening insurgency, a more complex insurgency, and one that is more likely going to endure preparation and planning. This next point really is extraordinary and emerges frequently in Trotsky's writing, a keen and detailed understanding of the opponent's weakness and layered organization. Uh, Trotsky knew the mindset and people who constituted the opposition. His understanding of their weaknesses uh, certainly was essential for targeting, exploitation, and morale. And I have a picture there of the 
Romanov family, the czarist family that was ruling at the time and that was overthrown by the communists. I think the next slide is going to make that even clearer. I think this quote, and among several, I'm, I'm by no means just lifting these out of Trotsky's writings. Uh, there are many like this, and he uses them in such a broad way. But th this quote is important to look at. He, he looks at the possessing classes, the capitalist classes, his opponents, that constituted the social forces of the other camp. And, and notice how he doesn't use the term military forces. He understood the strength and weaknesses of opponents very deeply and cut into these social forces. This means that they were its weaknesses, these solid people of capital, the press, the pulpit. Notice that he's getting into occupations areas, the, the so-called major areas of influence and class structures. Where and when have they fought? He notices their lack of fighting, their lack of military ability and experience. They are accustomed to find out by telegraph or telephone the results of the battles which settle their fate. The younger generation, and look how he's, he's using age here in understanding elements within class. The sons, the students, they were almost all hostile to the October Revolution, but a majority of them too stood aside. They stood with their father awaiting the outcome of the battle, end quote. A very keen understanding, a very nuanced, granular understanding of the opponent's weaknesses, the very elements that were being used against the communists called Bolsheviks at this time period. And this is very, very important to understand. Again, when the opponent, when an insurgent has that careful, deliberate, and calculated nuanced understanding of the of the enemy their enemy it's going to be an insurgency that's far more difficult to fight when they have clear targets they're more likely able to reach them and affect them and trotsky certainly with the bolsheviks did this very well targeting trotsky identified the key targets military students and workers and targeted them carefully with force diplomacy and ruthless aggression depending on the most effective means and I want to focus on that a clear target and very broad measures and means used to influence those targets and when I use the term targeting I don't mean just kinetic or the use of lethal force against an opponent but looking at an opponent's strengths and co-opting it using positive or benefits or some sort of reward to manipulate, to move, or to co-op that force. Trotsky was extraordinary, as the Bolsheviks and Lenin were, in this issue of targeting. And here we see in this quote by Trotsky from his writing, The Art of Insurrection, we find some of the reasons why they did this so well. He starts this sentence here by saying, in contact as they were from day to day with workers, meaning the Bolsheviks, this Communist Party were integrated, operating, on a daily basis with the population. Therefore, they had not only accurate intelligence, but they had a very, very deep analysis and understanding of the players, the forces, the social structures and classes that were operating in an insurgency. So you notice here, soldiers and sailors. The Bolsheviks were aware of the deep qualitative differences between, and here he uses the example, the constituent parts of this army they were to lead in the battle. The very plan of the insurrection was based to a considerable degree upon a calculation of these differences. So the Bolsheviks even knew their, their own forces very well. They knew the different classes and elements internally that comprised their military structures and then how to motivate, how to organize, how to deploy, and how to get these layers working in a unity of effort. That is no easy, simple task. It's a difficult thing for us to do. Now imagine the, the correlation here or the relevancy of this to the analysis of our own forces. To be able to look at our own forces and identify weaknesses is very difficult to do. Imagine one of our military leaders having this calculated of a view, a view and talking about it openly, mentioning the differences in strengths and weaknesses in our own forces. It's, it's something very, very difficult to do. There is a, a human tendency not to want to look as deeply internally as we would externally but that understanding and targeting and using incentive even in a positive way 
is critical for developing a force. And when we see an insurgency developing this type of capability to be able to have that perspective and to be able to mobilize force forces in such a unity of effort, operationalizing them, forging these elements together, we undoubtedly see a higher classification of an insurgency and one that's more likely to be a threat. Trotsky was also, as many insurgents are, very skilled at using concealment tactics, denial and deception, or MILDEC, military deception, depending on how the operation took place. In this slide here, I have using deception as an art in an insurgency. Trotsky mentions the deception operations used during the demilitarization or gun control measures that were taken by the regime, the Tsarist regime. If you study this writing, The Art of Insurrection, he talks about a very well calculated and executed deception plan where the Bolsheviks were turning over some of the older inferior weapons and doing that in a large enough number to the right people in order to create this feigned compliance, but in the meantime, we're accelerating the acquisition of weapons and resources, including hiding and and uh, caching uh, some of their very best weapons and concealing them. So this is very important. And it's not just one incident. It's certainly the use of military deception and denial and deception across the entire DIME scenario, DIME being an acronym for diplomacy, intelligence, military, and economics. So the communists understood this very, very well at a strategic, operational, and a tactical level. And intuition is an, a critical skill in not only Trotsky's insurgency and developing this to depth, but also in very difficult insurgencies that develop this type of capability, ones that will endure and ones that will be a greater challenge. Despite the criticisms of anti-communists, uh, these effective insurgents did not operate under strict and rote guidelines. Intuition and sensitivity to conditions of the field, the battle space, were qualities demanded of communist insurgents, Trotsky being an example of one. No, they did not deviate from communist doctrine. The communist doctrine was often broad enough to not only allow but emphasize a fit and adjustment to the battle space and local conditions in particular. It was nuanced to sensitivities and changes in the balance of power and particularly to local application. They, the communists, understood the importance of managing the so-called dialectics and the art of political murder, which sounds very cold to say, but they were very calculated in who they killed. Um, which they carried out in stages with careful consideration to timing and phasing. Let me just backtrack for a little there. The communists had a, had a tactic which of using political murder to gain strategic power. In general, they had a practice where they would kill the best and the worst. The best opponent, because they were obviously a threat. The worst, because it was popular to kill a village leader, a local leader who was very exploited, because that would cause a windfall of local, or I should say popular support. So this intuitive ability that's often talked about, and I have a quote, Trotsky during the Bolshevik Revolution mentions this, intuition and experience are necessary for revolutionary leadership, just as for all other kinds of creative activity. Uh, intuition truly is to have this intuitive ability to lead an insurgency and to, I should say, develop leadership at the tactical level is a very important capability when achieved by insurgency that will cause it to be a much higher threat. And this is difficult for us because you can't necessarily quantify it, the uh, qualified, I should say, uh, quantified, excuse me. You can see the effects of it. It's obvious when the success is taking place, but to, to detail exactly what this is and how to measure it, to have a measure of, of effort on this, is, is difficult to do. You know, what is this? It's, it's a combination of experience. It's a combination of intelligence. It's a, a combination of awareness. It's attention to subtlety. It's a sense of calculated risk forged from all of these. And it's something other that we can't quite understand. 
But when a leader has this and a movement develops this, it becomes extraordinarily difficult to engage or to defeat. Not impossible. We find that the communists often lost. The, the, the anti-communist forces in many places were were much more skilled, much more developed, much more potent. So I don't want to overstate this case, but what I'm trying to do is call attention to some of these tangible and intangible aspects and capabilities that the communists and people like Trotsky are uh, have cultivated so well. And we should keep an eye out for these when they emerge in modern insurgencies. Okay, then, in quick review, we can see seven major characteristics and capabilities developed by Trotsky and, by extension, higher order insurgencies that give them a durability and a potency not found in ordinary or common types of insurgencies or rebellions and insurrections that take place. And we should have an eye to these things and these qualities and understand them as capabilities and also characteristics and particularly how they affect the battle space and the environment in the local population. So please take a moment to synthesize this information by looking over these seven particulars. I believe by understanding them and studying them and looking for these in insurgencies of the present, we will find some of the major capabilities that cause insurgencies to, to succeed. Again, I want to thank you for viewing this brief presentation. And please feel free to contact me if you have any specific questions on this subject in particular. But again, as I say in these presentations, I would hope that this kindled as many questions as it's generated some answers. I would hope that this provokes you as a, a student at Henley Putnam University to study these topics deeper, to be more aware of them and to engage your course and your instructors uh, more, more zealously, and thus, by doing so, increase your learning. Again, thank you very much for viewing this presentation. Have a great week.